just a moment, but welcome. Welcome to our one o'clock demo. So we'll give it just another minute. So in case we have a couple more folks who want to join us. It's amazing how long a minute is on a webinar. Just a personal note there. Well, again, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cindy Williams. I'm the Vendor Relations Manager with the California Peace Officers Association, CPOA, and I want to welcome you to our October demo days. It's really hard to stay connected in 2020. We're all feeling it. We all know it. And who thought in October that we'd be doing, uh, still be doing the same things we were doing in March. So we know how important it is to stay connected, even if you can't do it face to face. We also know how important it is to uh, find your resources, products, and services that the, your agencies and departments need during this time. So we felt that Demo Day is bringing you quick 30-minute demos from your preferred providers and, and possibly new providers was really important to do this year. So I want to thank you for attending Demo Days and a big thank you to all of our uh, demo uh, providers, companies who have joined us today to connect with you and share great information about their products and platforms. So um, I also want to encourage you to use the app, the CPOA events app, because they are featured, all of our demo day providers are featured on the app under the demo days icon, as well as the sponsorship icon. So please take some time to connect with them via our app. And we will be recording this session. So um, share with your teams. We'll send it out to you shortly in the days to come. So please forward it on to your teams if you think they would find it useful. And with that, I want to turn it over to our, our Demo Day product company, Mark 43. And I'd like to introduce Terry Green, who will have a brief introduction before you have your demo. Welcome, Terry. Oh, thank you so much, Cindy. We really appreciate uh, the opportunity to present today. I recognize a couple of the names there on the list, and I appreciate you joining. I have my teammate Holt Walker with me. Uh, Holt is based out of our DC office. I want to just take a few minutes to do an overview of Mark 43. Uh, one, I'm based here in California, in Southern Cal, uh, and uh, with Mark 43, I've been here a little bit over three years. Uh, the start of our company, the founders, there's three of them that are still with our company, uh, they got their start at Harvard University. They were part of a, uh, an engineering course at Harvard, met each other, and they had an opportunity to work with the uh, Massachusetts State Police. And what they were trying to do was help them develop an application to solve gang-related crime activity. And what they realized pretty quickly was that public safety software was quite antiquated in most cases, a lot of holes in the data, um, just not very user-friendly from the patrol side. And so what, they, what they've realized is that they could do a really good job building out a new system using modern technology. And with that, they were able to raise $105 million. They were founded in 2012. Uh, today we have over 180 employees in five offices, including one that's in Manhattan Beach, Los Angeles, California. And with that, our first opportunity was Washington, D.C. Metro Police. It was an amazing opportunity. Uh, we, had, uh, we got entrenched in, in all aspects of the department, uh, spent time with dispatch, records, everyone, trying to figure out the best way to solve their problems and help them improve report writing times and reduce the time so that they can put more officers on the street. I'm sure you can read the stats there, but over 15,000 users were trained pretty quickly through a Train the Trainer program. Over 40 law enforcement agencies around the region now share data across our platform, our RMS platform in DC. And from that, that really launched our success from 2015 on. And today we have agencies like DC Metro, of course, Boston Police Department that went live, Fresno County Sheriff and 12 agencies that share data across our platform for CAD and RMS, King County, it's actually Washington, sorry about that, it's around Seattle, and then Seattle Police Department. We've since brought on a few more, Holt. And throughout California, we're really gaining a momentum. Uh, what's exciting for us is we have agencies starting at 12 sworn all the way up to California Highway Patrol. They are one of our most recent customers. We're very excited to launch a statewide NIBRS compliant records management system for, Cal for California Highway Patrol. There's a couple that are not listed on here that are new. Uh, we'll talk about those on the next slide. 
And so as we gain momentum, we have uh, Elk Grove and some others up north that just signed. We have several in implementation, over 50 now, and growing in California. We also were very excited to be awarded the opportunity in Sydney, Australia, and we opened an office to work with the New South Wales Police. So we now have another office in Australia and an exciting uh, proposition for agencies across the world. We are cloud-based. We're hosted on the Amazon Web Services GovCloud. It's very uh, scalable. It's, it's, uh, it allows us to implement pretty fast. Uh, allows for very high availability and uptime, redundant hosting across different geographical zones so that if there's any type of natural disaster, systems fail over and you have uptime on your CAD and RMS at all times. Uh, there's upgrades that we push out with no need for scheduled downtime, and I think that's really what sets us apart is being able to uh, push out things and not, not disrupt your workflows or your um, productivity. A uh, quick few slides I'm going to show because I want to give Holt most of the time of this demo, but just a quick overview of what we have. We have a very nice user-friendly report writing application for patrol, uh, very user-friendly, allowing them to learn it very quickly. Uh, <clears throat> it's available on all, all uh, devices that have a modern web browser, so it's device agnostic. It works on iOS. It works on Android, uh, MDCs, etc. We also have a really cool mobile app which allows officers to dictate their narratives in the field using talk to text, allowing them to add photos and video. And everything is uploaded immediately in real time to the RMS. Nothing stored to the phone. It's secure. It's, it really saves time with allowing them to get uh, you know, a lot of the data and information while it's fresh on their minds into the system so that they can come back to the RMS later and then use Word and uh, other editing functions to be able to, uh, to write out their narratives and create clean reports. Case management is embedded, and there's so many cool features. The ability to add photos, link locations, link people, uh, profiles. It's just it's an impressive case management system that's all part of the RMS. There's no quote module. It's all a piece of the RMS and uh, very user friendly. We also have property and evidence management, and what we, what we've created are some really cool apps that allow. Um, allow the ability to not have to use those heavy Bluetooth scanners anymore. So there's some efficiency and cost savings by being able to use uh, mobile apps to scan barcodes and configure those accordingly. Uh, BI Analytics, a very cool analytical program. And if, if you've never seen Mark 43, this is something we added a few years, a couple years ago. It's uh, dynamic. It allows you to create different visual outputs. Uh, situational awareness uh, allows you to schedule and send reports to certain people in the department or outside the agency, uh, and it's, it's, it's user friendly. And then NIBRS. NIBRS is scary for a lot of people, especially records. Uh, we've made it so easy for, for both officers and records, being able to factor in and push all that NIBRS or CYBRS related uh, rules and such into the RMS so that we can help officers create good reports on the front end, showing them how to correct uh, certain aspects of uh, things that are required for NIBRS right as they're writing reports. So we have a, an upfront uh, system validation aspect that makes it so easy for officers. On the back end with the NIBRS workspace, it allows a records uh, person to essentially click a button and hit all of the reports in one month to look for errors uh, and before they submit it. And then it shows them how to fix the error. At thousands of hours of engineering effort went into that, and we're very proud of how we do NIBRS or CYBRS for California. And then lastly, the system configurability is so easy. Uh, you don't have to be a programmer. Uh, it can be controlled by different administrators in the department. In fact, I created a statistic today, something that the officers could see, and you can date it and, say, and show it to be active for the officers during certain, certain events or certain time frames. So I created one for CPOA 2020. Um, easy as a couple of minutes in the application, and it becomes live immediately. 
we offer CAD, we offer RMS as two components, either separate or together. When they're working together, it's an integrated, bi-directional system that pulls information in real time for situational awareness, both for the dispatchers as well as for the officers and the CAD, and really works well together. Uh, we're really proud of our application. We're proud of, proud of our growth. And again, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to let Holt take it from here. Uh, one last thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have, as I mentioned, Ymark 43, we have 24-hour support. We have the, our offices local here in, in Los Angeles. A lot of experience uh, implementing California, which is an eccentric state, uh, and a proven more force multiplier of departments of all sizes. Uh, we provide monthly updates and enhancements, and it's included in our subscription-based pricing. We're very flexible on pricing aspects, especially with tight budgets. And our technology remains up-to-date for decades to come. I think that's the differentiator with a cloud-based or web-based system. And again, we're excited to be here. So thank you. Okay, Holt. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, so this is the Mark 43 RMS that I've just logged into. <clears throat> this is what we call the, the user's home dashboard. It's the screen, kind of the home base that the user will be directed towards as soon as they log into the system. Across the top here, we've got agency-wide or user group-wide or specific users uh, that, can, that can get these specific uh, alerts. In this case, COVID reminder, you can do anything for a, um, a kind of system alert, any type of BOLO, you can get very flexible with that. I'll acknowledge it. On the top right screen here, notification that I can check out right when I log in. You can configure what type of notifications will be sent based off the user level role um, and then as I move further down the dashboard, we've got a couple different sections here to check out. Firstly, the action required reports. What this contains for the user upon logging into the system is a clean list of reports that are really going to require some sort of action in a timely manner. In my case, we've got four draft reports here. Uh, if I had a report that had been that I had submitted and had been rejected by a supervisor, that would appear here at the top designated by a red exclamation point. Along the left side of the screen, we've got some recently viewed reports and cases. Um, scrolling further down, we can embed external links to Clue and Intranet, the Mark 43 Help Center, which is a database that we provide customers, uh, agencies that contains hundreds of articles and how-to videos to assist in software functionality. Uh, and then here at the bottom, we've got a feed of recent arrests that defaults to being department wide, but you can filter this down um, by district, by PSA, uh, really just to increase the level of transparency um, throughout you know, the agency for your officers, um, leading to kind of increased safety, increased transparency. And a cool little feature here is that you can configure this to meet your personal um, really what your heart desires, how you want to uh, have your kind of home screen layout appear. Next thing I'll outline is the search capabilities. So Mark 43, really a, a key component of the Mark 43 system is a very robust search functionality. Firstly, we've got our quick search here. And if we have a person or a report number, a piece of property that we want to search quickly, we kind of know what we're looking for. You can just quickly type that in here and you can have, you know, person profile or report drop down, jump to it very quick. If you're not maybe as sure if you've got more complex criteria to plug in, you can jump to our advanced search. And what you'll see here is various different tabs by which you can search, which means, you know, you can search uh, to pull a list of reports. You can search to pull a list of CAD events, persons, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'll just quickly scan through here is to show you, you know, for all of these fields, you can search in Mark 43, just the RMS alone. In CAD, there's several more fields. Really, this is hundreds of fields. Uh, it's essentially every field where data is input on the front end can be searched by your agency on the back end, exported, and visualized, which I'll show you uh, in a few minutes in our analytics module. Uh, what I'll do now is I will show you at a high level what a crime report looks like. 
given this is probably going to be one of the more common reports that your agency writes, <clears throat> especially for NIBRS or CYBRS purposes, you know, we can, you know, firstly, we, we have a, a bi-directional real-time sync with the Mark 43 CAD. Uh, in that case, CAD event information will pop over very seamless to create a report directly from CAD. For this demo's purposes, I'm just creating a report from scratch. So now we've jumped into a draft report. These different sections along this right side that you can either click through or you can scroll through, we call these different cards. It's really just kind of piece by piece broken out sections of a report to allow for um, kind of more easy either breaking up of, uh, of data entry to, to split work across a report, allow for just kind of piecemeal working through a report in the case of a, uh, you know, a bigger incident that needs to be documented. But what I'll show you here is first this event information card. A cool feature of Mark 43 that holds constant across <clears throat> the entire RMS as you move through case management, evidence, et cetera, is active error detection. So if I, by accident, as an officer, entering data on the front end in my report, make a, make a mistake, like putting a date in the future, our system recognizes instantly that that's not possible. Uh, it actively detects that error and prompts the user to plug in something that actually could be a true value. Similarly, there's very, uh, very efficient hide show logic, meaning that if I say yes, there's another law enforcement agency on scene, it's going to prompt me with additional fields here. But if I say no, it's not going to clutter my screen with those additional fields. Uh, this allows for you know, easier, seamless, more efficient data entry on the front end, but also less clutter on the back end as records, supervisors, command staff are, are handling data down the line. Adding property, uh, <clears throat> you can add all sorts of property in a very seamless fashion in Mark 43. What this really means is that on the RMS side, you know, within the report, I'm filling out, call it, for example, maybe a wallet. Uh, as soon as I submit that report, that piece of property is going to immediately funnel through to our property and evidence module in real time. So there's really no siloed nature between modules like Terry alluded to. Uh, it's really gonna be a very seamless bi-directional sync between Mark 43 report writing management all the way to Mark 43 property and evidence management. So something I wanna highlight within the crime report, it's very important, is our NIBRS and CYBRS capabilities. So if I'm an officer and I'm writing a burglary report, 459, Mark 43 will work with the agency throughout the implementation process to map these offense codes to the correct NIBRS value so that once that effort's complete, as an officer, you just type in the code you're used to, whatever code is relevant for the scenario. And the minimum exact required fields for that NIBRU scenario is going to appear and be required for that officer. So for example, if I put in a burglary offense here, it's gonna ask me things like, was method of entry force? If I do something more, God forbid there be a murder, it's gonna ask me things like homicide factors, gang information. And as soon as I get to the end of this card, you can see I tried to save there and all of these NIBRS required fields are highlighting not only in red at the top, but they will also highlight in red throughout this card, throughout this section of the report. So what this really means is that we're not gonna burden officers with this mandatory transition to NIBRS. We're not gonna burden them with understanding the rules, the ins and outs, filling out uh, extra data fields. It's really just gonna be the bare minimum set of fields required for that offense. Something to touch on down here, our narrative, uh, we support all sorts of formatting. Um, you know, we've got italics, bullet points, et cetera, et cetera. You can expand this to blow up full screen. You can copy paste 
Uh, but a really valuable aspect of this is our auto save capabilities. So if you're an officer and you are writing a long narrative uh, and you have to, for whatever reason, get up and leave, uh, maybe run back out in the field, respond to another event, you're only ever at absolute most going to lose 30 seconds of progress. I know that can be a headache uh, based off some agencies I've worked with in the past. So no more will that be a problem. Uh, your, your progress will be saved automatically every 30 seconds. Jumping over to our reports dashboard. So this is where all reports uh, by the agency will live. As a supervisor, you can create a filter here to, uh, and you can save the filter where you can look at a specific unit you're in charge of, specific uh, report status. You can basically go through any reports you need to. You can quickly check out a narrative if there is one. You can jump straight into that report. After you review the report, I know I didn't fill one out, so this is very quickly what a full report would look like that has been submitted. If I want to validate the report or maybe reject the report, it's actually already been approved by someone else. I could reject it. It's going to require me to give commentary. All of that will be tracked in the report history. Uh, it will be there will be a very clear paper trail with timestamps on exactly what comments were added, what was changed, why it was rejected. Very clear history there. So we've looked at kind of the home, the home dashboard, search capabilities, basic layout of Mark 43. After submitting reports, like I mentioned, <clears throat> the report writing side of Mark 43 integrates seamlessly with the case management module. What I'll show you is a fully built out case here. The second that reports are entered in the Mark 43 um, RMS, they're going to be available for investigation. We're not going to hold up detectives, uh, you know, to have a, a submitted report be approved before it can be assigned out to an investigator. Uh, you can do this instantly. And this is what we call our case jacket. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to consist of the case summary, which is really just high level case details, all of the reports that are a part of that case and tasks which we have a dedicated tasks module, but very useful. We see it utilized a lot on the case management side to manage the workload, manage the necessary work that needs to be done as part of investigation for cases. All profiles that are a part of, you know, under this same DR, a part of this case. You got all your person profiles, you've got organization, location, property profiles, notes that a detective can quickly you know jot down things um, related to the case that maybe not wouldn't warrant a full report to be written tasks and associated records so maybe different drs that were that were related maybe a string of robberies over the course of six months that have different report numbers so that's the case management it's a full case uh very very high level what I'll show now is our mobile capabilities. So like Terry mentioned, we have a field reporting app. So if I am an officer, I'm out in the field, I have this app, I can do a couple cool things. I can take notes, just very similar to writing down a note on your iPhone. Uh, I can scan driver's licenses, which will integrate with the, the local DMV to pull relevant person information which is what happened here. I scanned my own license here uh, and all of this auto populated into these notes. Additionally, you can take photos, videos, you can very easily view them. If you forgot that University of Virginia won the national championship in 2019, you can quickly remind yourself of that. I'm a big UVA fan. You can also create a report straight from the mobile collection and it's gonna, it's gonna just auto populate all of this information back into your report. So really cool things you can do on the mobile uh, application, some very efficient field-based reporting. You can also do voice to text like Terry mentioned. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm jumping into the Mark 43 Business Intelligence Suite. Also, uh, we call this our analytics module. And I'll show you how, you know, I've mentioned how, how much data, how efficiently we collect data on the front end. But I'll show you how we can actually visualize this data on the back end and make this data really valuable across the department for all relevant stakeholders. So a dashboard I'm pulling up here, and we offer a combination of, of Mark 43 built dashboards. We can work with the agency to build dashboards, um, but we can also provide licenses for the agency to learn how to and to actually build their own dashboards. What I'm doing here is still loading a bit, here we go. So this is just a quick dashboard we put together on field interviews and use of force reports. And what you can see here is kind of a heat map split out by the contact type for the, the field interview. Um, this is all spread out throughout California. You can see the breakdown of race uh, for those stops. And then you can see the officer breakdown. So a really cool way to quickly visualize a lot of your data um, to really kind of put all of that hard work out in the field, all of that streamlined report writing capability into a much more digestible format. And we can schedule um, regular releases, regular emails to, of these reports to be PDF and sent out to whoever the agency desires. So it can really provide that high level of transparency, that really valuable information that relevant stakeholders need to make informed decisions throughout the agency. So at a very high level, that is the Mark 43 RMS. Uh, I will open up for about five minutes of Q&A, um, but I really do appreciate everyone's attendance on this and I hope you enjoyed the uh, demonstration of the Mark 43 system. Thank you, Holt, really appreciate that. Um, we do have one question uh, so far in the chat box. Although the products integrate with NIBRS, do and can they integrate with California's master offense codes through uh, the Department of Justice? That's a great question. So we yeah, go ahead. I was going to say the concept of, of integration, that might not be the right way to, to say it. What we can do is we can get the agency set up with those offense codes, map those correctly to mirror um, whatever the DOJ has. And that's something that we, that our implementation team works closely with agency personnel throughout um, the implementation and cutover process to have those offense codes that would benefit the agency's workflows most. Right, thank you. And, and do, does the system have a, a, a RIPA component? It sure does. Uh, for AB 953, uh, we have uh, built it in our CAD, but we're also making it available through the RMS to collect perceived race, a um, whole, whole line of, uh, of information that will be required. I know that there are different intervals in which this will be mandated for each agency, uh, but we're prepared for RIPA. It's all part of the application, uh, makes it seamless. Again, some, some functionality uh, within the app itself allowing you to uh, designate the fields that you want uh, to collect and make required. So our whole system has that capability throughout, really being able to configure what's required by the officers versus not required and uh, allowing them to get through the reports pretty quickly. Thank you, good question. Yeah, thanks. You know, and also there's a little bit of a, you know, the implementation, how long does that take and training related, you know, what, what time does it take for a, a patrol officer to learn the system? Wow, that's a great question. In fact, do you work here? <laughs> I will say that what's really, really nice about our system, and, and for those of that have sat through this, thank you so much. I think you can see that it's pretty user friendly. It's very new looking as a, as a website is for most people. Um, I've never been trained on LinkedIn or Facebook or any of these applications, but yet I figured it out. Um, training for this for RMS, and that's both the mobile side, the MDC side, you know, the, the mobile app, typically about four hours on average. That's what we're hearing from our agency customers, and that's for patrol officers. Uh, I know Holt's done implementation. He might be able to comment there further on what it takes for dispatch, maybe admins. Yeah, it's, it's, it's similar. It's, uh, it's very quick. I mean, it, it obviously varies agency to agency a bit, but we do find that 
I mean, there's a mat, there's a, that learning curve is really taken down very quickly in that first day that you're really diving into the system. Very intuitive, very modern. Um, typically, you know, within the first day or two, you know, people, dispatchers, report writers alike are flying through the system, no problem. Awesome. I like hearing that. And from a training, and thank you, Holt. And from an implementation perspective, it just is going to depend on how many integrations are needed as well as data migration. We have several data migration options, um, including one that's called a PDF migration. So if you don't want to move dirty data, duplicative data from an old system to new, there's different ways of helping us, helping you on our end get that data and the, and the images into the application and then being able to search by those. So the average a safe bet is about 10 to 12 months. Uh, not to say we couldn't do it quicker or uh, might take a little bit longer, but 10 to 12 months is what we've been uh, averaging here in California. All right. Any other questions? I don't see anything else in chat. Well, I do want to thank Holt and Terry. Thank you um, both from Mark 43 for being part of our, um, our demo days today. As I mentioned, we have been recording the session and it will be available through our channels in the coming days. And again, reach out to the team at Mark 43 via our app. You have that on the desktop or on your mobile device. It's a great way to stay connected in 2020. We know it's important to deliver resources for you. Uh, we really appreciate your time today. And I'm gonna stop recording, but I will share one more.